Hi everybody, this is Michael with the Arkham Horrors, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial of a track that I wrote recently called Terror at the Grand Guignol. It is from volume 5 of the On the Path to Carcosa series, and for this particular composition I decided to just use two different instrument libraries uh, to create the entire track. And I also decided to score this particular track to a film. For this particular uh, piece of music, I scored it to a scene from a movie called The Man Who Laughs. Probably the most significant thing about this film is that the title character is uh, widely considered to be the inspiration for uh, Batman's arch-villain, the Joker. So today, uh, we're going to talk about two different libraries. So I used uh, two actually very different libraries to try and uh, create a piece of music uh, inspired by this clip from this film. So what you'll see here in pink is uh, the primary library that I used. And uh, it is uh, called Symphobia for Pandora from Project Sam. It is an orchestral library. Uh, and in the green here, uh, we're going to be uh, looking at the British Drama Toolkit from Spitfire Audio. So from the website for Project Sam, Symphobia for Pandora is described as Symphobia for Pandora lets you summon orchestral cinematic risers, foreboding falls, and earth-shattering crescendos with unmatched ease and flexibility. So let me just quickly walk you through what's included in these libraries. So for Pandora, the uh, library is split into seven different sections here. We have combos, which are um, combinations of different orchestral instruments doing a very specific type of sound. So in this particular one here, it is a combo called Keep It Short. can see here that there's low strings, low woodwinds, and a tutti orchestra, which is Italian for complete or full or total. Uh, and so there's various uh, combination patches in the combo section. For example, here is Restless Risers, which is going to be strings, strings, and strings, uh, various uh, articulations. And it's going to sound a little something like this. So that's the combos. We've got some effects here, which are uh, various instrumentations. Uh, we've got some brass, we have a piano, some strings, and some woodwinds. And again, these are various uh, textures uh, and um, sounds and styles uh, that, again, are designed to build tension. So for example, here is the brass low ensemble effects. Very unsettling stuff. Uh, we've got some clusters, which are uh, again split into various uh, sections. So we have brass, strings, 2D orchestra, and woodwinds. And they sound a little something like this. And we have some tonal patches here, and these are uh, largely their crescendos or swells or bursts. And they have three, in this particular patch, they have uh, three different uh, note lengths that you can use. So depending on the project, the tempo, what you need it for, this gives you a little bit of playability, although largely this is not really a playable orchestra. It's really more for giving punches or um, emphasis to your music project. It really should be, ideally it probably should be used as a layer. Uh, here is some tonal low dynamic uh, crescendo strings. Uh, 
Uh, we have some pulses, which are uh, repeated notes. And they, again, they come in some different sections. We've got some brass, strings, woods, uh, and uh, they are separated in from clusters and tonal pulses. Uh, clusters are usually where instruments are not quite playing in sync with each other. And then we've got, for example, here's a tonal. And these come in various time signatures, but we'll talk about those uh, in a bit. And the uh, risers, which uh, we saw a bit of this in uh, the combinations. And finally here we have a percussion collection of uh, various um, sets of symphonic drums. Uh, in this particular patch here we have cinematic drums, which are kind of your big booming ones. So in this case we have rolls and then we also have hits. If you want to just load the, for the sake of saving space on your computer, if you just want to uh, load the hits or just the rolls, you can do that. Uh, there are symbols. Uh, there's a whole selection of symbol effects, which are just kind of scrapey sounds. Uh, then there's also hits and rolls with their symbols. Uh, and uh, there's the Gran Casa, which is, again, kind of uh, one of those big, big uh, kind of bassy drums. You have tam-tams, which are kind of eastern cymbal sounds. You have uh, timpani, which is your traditional uh, percussion that you hear in, a, uh, in an orchestra setup. And uh, some toms, which are a little higher range. Uh, and then you've got 2D percussion patches, which are combinations of uh, all of these instruments doing different things or uh, different combinations of those instruments. Uh, so it's a pretty comprehensive collection. Uh, and uh, to counter the um, eeriness and, and uh, kind of discomforting sound of uh, the Pandora library, I decided to uh, pair it up with Spitfire Audio's British Drama Toolkit Brass and Reeds library. Uh, your score in an instant. You can immerse yourself in a new world of brass and reeds, a stunning sound palette of 99 patches brought to life with our unique and intuitive layers technology. And we'll talk about the layers in a bit. Uh, instantly sparking inspiration on first play. It's every composer's dream, the ability to finish a whole music cue within a single patch. Uh, they have a collection of uh, solo instruments and uh, small groups of uh, combinations of instruments uh, which play together um, to give a really nice emotion and uh, depth. So for example here, uh, when you first load up the patch, uh, you have a series of combinations of different instruments. You also have a brass section, uh, which has a full ensemble, tuba, brass and tenor trombone, tenor horn, and flugelhorn. You've got some reeds here including an oboe contrabassoon, and uh, you've got a recorder selection of an ensemble. You have a saxophone patch, uh, bass and alto, as well as a full ensemble. Uh, but we're going to focus right now just on the combis, just to let you listen to kind of a little bit of what this sounds like. And the purpose of these uh, libraries, the British Drama Toolkit libraries, is that traditionally the harder you hit the keys, the louder the notes go. Uh, with this, their idea is a little bit different, where um, for certain sound patches, they want it to be uh, the harder you hit the keys, kind of the more information is coming out of the instruments.
So it's just a, a completely different uh, vibe to it. Uh, a very emotional vibe. Uh, but they are, so they're broken down into these combinations, uh, or you can pull up just the brass instruments, and again, there are various uh, articulations, uh, or any of these different sounds uh, if you're not interested in combining uh, little ensembles together you have this option to do uh, things like just the recorders uh, and there are various articulations in each of these uh, uh, different instrument patches that um, you may not find in some of the other ones like for example these recorders here there's a chiff So let's talk about the track here. The basic premise of the, this particular clip is that uh, there is a performance going on uh, and the uh, star attraction is this title character, The Man Who Laughs, uh, and uh, the uh, performance is getting a bit of notoriety. And so this character right here uh, decides to go to the show and she is um, a member of the aristocracy and she's kind of an unpleasant character. And uh, through the course of the show, uh, she finds herself quite taken uh, with this man. I decided to put a slightly different spin on the interpretation of the clip where um, I show it as um, she's being enthralled by him and that he is, uh, in, he's uh, exerting some sort of mesmeric influence on her. Uh, so that's kind of the take I took with it. Uh, and uh, as we go through the library here, you should be able to get a sense that that's uh, what I'm trying to convey here. So let's uh, just do a quick run through of the first section here so that you have an idea of what I'm working with. So we're going to stop it right there. We're about a minute and some change in here. So let's talk about these instruments uh, that uh, we start off with here. So the very first patch we've got loaded in here is uh, a drum roll. And that sounds a little something like this. And I decided to pair that with a swell from Pandora. Uh, this is one of the combis, the Haunted Swell. So that sounds like this. And you can hear two different things kind of going on there. You've got a, a horn kind of doing a slow bend while you've got these strings doing this kind of um, a little arpeggio. And then those two instruments are gonna go into the British Drama Toolkit. I have a couple of different things going on here. So we've got these reeds. And this is the Brass and Reeds combi. And that just gives it some nice uh, emotion. I think that's kind of the, the basic idea of how I was using the uh, British Drama Toolkit for this, was just to give it some emotion. Uh, and then we've got very subtle ensemble stuff here. Mm -hmm. 
So layered with the first patch. Add just a hair more uh, as the instruments are just starting to play, just to kind of give it a bit of an introduction. We've got uh, this flutter that uh, comes in from uh, the recorders. So that when you're layering these three things together, you've got this coming on. Got some contrabass bassoon. Uh, I actually took two different patches and layered them together so you can see that the layered chatter and the swells are both working in uh, concert with one another. So let's just hear that instrument on its own. So it's just kind of this growly sound uh, that's just meant to kind of, again, just provide a little bit of um, depth to the rest of it. So then to go back to the Pandora library here, we've got uh, some uh, Gran Casa percussion. And again, it's just there to kind of underscore some stuff uh, as we're building. Uh, and then, we have some timpani that we're kind of countering that with. So together, we have this going on. And uh, then finally, we have kind of subtle, again, crescendos that we're starting off with, these low string crescendos. Now, one of the great features of the Pandora library is uh, this section right here, uh, which is called Adaptive Sync. So when you hold down the note, uh, it'll hold for a certain amount of beats, seconds, or it'll play to the next downbeat on the track. So for example here, so if we uh, start here at the 41st measure, for example, uh, I'm going to let it run for four beats and then I'm going to press down a note and you should be able to hear it hold for or hit, hit the peak of the crescendo at eight beats. So. And that can be changed uh, to just four beats if I wanted it to. So one of the other kind of uh, really fun uh, components that I was able to use in this were uh, the symbolist ensemble effects. All these really kind of sharp effects and you can add various other uh, effects onto them. Uh, you can change the release on it so it plays even after you stop holding a note down. And that way it kind of gives a longer uh, kind of uh, a tail to it. So, so these symbol effects have just been a really great way to add some extra kind of color, high note color with all these low sounds that are happening. And uh, I'm mirroring uh, some of that uh, with these other uh, timpani effects as well. So we've got, which are some heavily processed effects. And I 
again, it's just kind of to add some unsettling kind of feeling so that nothing kind of feels even. When it all played together, you get this kind of vibe. This is a good time to go to this. There's another combi patch uh, from Pandora. which it's really easy to overuse those. Like they're, they're so beautiful sounding, you wanna use them for everything. But uh, again, I was just trying to do it to add a quick bit of tension. Uh, as this character is about to walk back through the curtain, I thought it was just important to have a little bit of a punch. So that's why I wanted to use this combi to illustrate that uh, the scene is about to change. So let's talk about this section right here. So. As we're about to go into the beginning of the play again, I just wanted something that illustrated uh, that we're, uh, we're reacting the same way that the audience is. And uh, the best way to do that is to have kind of these clustery things happening. So I just took a basic percussion hit and uh, mirrored that with this brass cluster. And then that leads very nicely into the next uh, part of this section. Now we're kind of going inside a, a play inside a play, more or less, uh, that the people watching the movie are now watching a play inside a movie. Um, I wanted to kind of put a bit of removal um, and make it feel like uh, there's something else happening. So the best way I could think to do that was to put these pulses in. Uh, so we've got these low mid-string pulses here, and they are separated uh, into blue and yellow. We've got some bass here, low bass uh, pulses, and then if you go over to this section here, here's the same set of notes, doing just like a, doing like an accent, so that you can go. And then you've got the mids in the yellow doing a similar kind of thing. And again, they can be broken up into uh, eighth notes, quarter notes, sixteenth notes, and triplet versions of those same things. So. Uh, which again gives you a lot of flexibility with how you want to play these. The other nice thing about the uh, Symphobia collection is that these microphone mixes. So you've got the standard mix that comes uh, when the patch loads, which is a really nice mix most of the time. But if, there, if you're looking for a very specific different kind of sound, if you want something that's a little further away, you've got this wide sound or a far sound or the stage, or a very close sound. And if you wanted to, you can combine these in a way that makes more sense to you. So the basics of this section is, I've got that going on, and then I've also got some For this, I, I separated the accents out from the um, from the pulses because I just wanted to be able to have more control over the patch. Uh, and then I have this third pulse, uh, which are high woodwinds, which again is separated out between the blue and the yellow, where the blue is the pulse and the yellow is the accent. So when these three are working together, this is what we've got. got some bends here, uh, which when combined with the full sound gives you just a really nice uh, sense of uh, telling the listener that 
you know, something odd just happened. And then we've got the, uh, the explosion, which was just, uh, again, going back to uh, some of these effects, these timpani effects and uh, symbols. We've got that, just doing a quick little thing here to illustrate the explosion. Which then leads into the section where the uh, female protagonist comes out. For that, we've got various different patches here that we're working with, uh, that we're layering up together. Some of them you've already heard, and some of them are new. This is a nice little patch here, uh, where it's doing this kind of thing. And that is another example of how kind of cool uh, the Pandora library is, because this is the original patch. So with this particular patch, you can click on the triangle here, and uh, it takes you into uh, the sound design area. And uh, if you click into the effects, there's all these different ways that you can manipulate it. Uh, for example, you can put a stutter on it. That's what I decided to do here for this little section was uh, to just give it a little, just a little something there to add uh, a little synthesis maybe to the sound. And these Pandora swells and crescendos and all that um, and bursts are all um, joined again by the British from a toolkit. I'm using the brass and the alto sax, and I'm also using uh, the uh, double reed ensemble swell. And uh, those two together sound like this. I would swear that uh, those were real instruments and not uh, a keyboard if uh, I were just listening to this. Uh, and uh, played together we've got, and played together we've got this great kind of build and then uh, subtle uh, downshift with everything. <laughs> Here we're heading into the second portion of the track where we uh, get the big reveal of the title character, The Man Who Laughs. Uh, in this particular case, I wanted to, again, just kind of give the impression that The Man Who Laughs uh, is a more sinister character and that he is uh, exerting an influence over the audience. So that's what you're going to see happening here. And uh, the way that I'm going to be creating this first section is going to be primarily through these Pandora uh, effects right here. So let's give a listen. Uh, so this look selection here uh, are uh, crescendos and uh, risers and things like that. So we've got a Ponticello crescendo. Beautiful sound. Uh, just really great to kind of start uh, building emphasis on uh, where we're at. The next piece we have here is going to be uh, string repetitions. And when you layer those two up together, they just they sound really nice.
but that's not enough. We need a third layer. We need some risers so that when those come in, uh, there's this other thing kind of bending upwards. And then we've got these woodwinds just so it's not all strings kind of filling in the information. Those woodwinds are beautiful, subtle layers. And then up here we've got uh, some horn bends as well. Uh, and they're joined by the flugel horns here, which uh, we'll get into a little bit further when things get a little more intense. So let's go back to the beginning here and we'll play this out through the next section. Let's briefly break down this uh, section here. Uh, a lot of what you're hearing are things we've already heard, these cymbal effects. And timpani effects. With the low strings. So we've got these saxophone flugelhorn combinations going on here, which um, don't really kick in until uh, the second part of this uh, this last section. Uh, but we'll uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but we've also got some horror effects uh, strings, uh, which are just really awesome. Really, really fun. Um, and I put them on a wide microphone um, so that they sound a little bit further back in the mix. Uh, and uh, then we've got these pulses. And I put them on a triplet so that the accent was a little different than what we had going on before. Uh, and then we've got uh, some uh, brass stuff going on here. And again, this is one of those things you see the triangles pushed in here, so it's a, a variation on a different sample. And depending on where you play, it's going to load a different sample articulation. That is layered here with uh, some woodwinds uh, because everything else is kind of low frequency. I wanted to get something that was in a little bit of a higher register. But again, I tried to keep it kind of far in the mix, so I made my own uh, microphone mix uh, and I kept the close mic way turned down uh, so that it wasn't uh, too present in the mix. So we've got these brass pulses that come in here. And again, I wanted them very far in the mix. Uh, and then uh, kind of the main melodic section here is going to be the British Drama Toolkit uh, Rounded Short Cor Anglais. So I decided to punctuate some of his movements. So as he's moving, uh, you're going to hear various uh, percussive things happening here. Mm -hmm. 
which sounds weird on its own, uh, but when you're adding in all these other effects that are going on, Those percussive things don't sound quite so present when you hear all that other stuff going on. Uh, but then we've got this little section here. And this is where I'm giving the impression that uh, there's some sort of mesmeric influence going on. Uh, certainly by the fact that they do this weird thing here. This kind of flashbacky kind of effect. Uh, so that was a good opportunity to uh, to really give the impression that the man who laughs is uh, exerting some sort of uh, influence. So the bulk of what we're hearing here is the British Drama Toolkit doing a lot of the, uh, the lifting here. As we've talked about before, we've got these uh, brass ensemble uh, notes just playing very subtly. Uh, we have... Uh... So we've got this uh, low brass and this contra bassoon uh, playing here that we've already heard. Uh, but it's being joined by this flugelhorn, uh, which is finally doing something kind of a bit more interesting. Uh, and then we add some uh, whirlwind, woodwind effects here to illustrate the fact that the audience is kind of losing their minds. And then we've got these brass pulses here, which are just great. And this uh, here is the realization that the uh, title character here is uh, enjoying the fact that he is uh, causing this effect on the audience. And we've got percussion doing a handful of things here uh, also that uh, almost on their own, these just sound like they could have worked without anything else underneath it, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a real sense of kind of madness going on in this scene, and I don't know that that's what the uh, director intended. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the breakdown of how these two libraries uh, worked together to create this track. Uh, now let's watch the, uh, the whole clip from start to finish.
thank you so much for taking this time to uh, sit through this uh, little demo. I hope uh, you found it interesting and enjoyable. And uh, if you're interested in seeing uh, more of these uh, behind the scenes things, feel free to uh, like, comment, subscribe, uh, all the usual things, uh, and just let me know uh, that this is uh, of interest to you and I'll make uh, more of these things. And as always, uh, you can uh, find my music at the Arkham Horrors wherever you do stream music on Spotify, Amazon Music, uh, Apple Music, Deezer, uh, pretty much anywhere uh, that you would stream music, I should be able to be uh, found under the Arkham Horrors. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next time.